Hey everybody. So when we left off we had something like this, which is our remapped model. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, but it's got a lot of extra density in places that we don't need extra density. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some advanced ZBrush features to change how our density is painted. Uh, and you probably already know how to do this if you've done modeling in ZBrush before, but we're going to go ahead and uh, start from scratch as if you don't. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is go over to a brush like the standard brush. If your ZAD is on, turn it off. If your RGB isn't on, turn it on. That will allow us to paint the model. Now, as you select colors, your whole model is going to change color. Anything that changes color hasn't been painted yet, uh, and it's just going with the default. So make your brush nice and big, and I'm sure that there is a shortcut key to do this. I just don't happen to know it. Uh, and then just, you know, slather your mesh in color so that it doesn't keep changing colors. And then, when you switch colors, you shouldn't see any changes in colors. Hooray! So the secret here is that if you want the mesh to have a higher mesh density, paint it red. If you want it to have a lower mesh density, paint it blue. Now, we could paint the face red and stuff like that, but the truth is that the density that a ZBrush is willing to aim for is hard to get any lower than what we've already told it to get. So we're going to focus on blue rather than red. And we're basically going to paint a lot of the mesh blue because uh, we don't need all of the density that it gives us. Uh, now, if you're going for a medium poly mesh, then this is not going to be an issue uh, because this is strictly because we're chasing the lowest poly mesh. When you're doing, say, animatable characters and stuff, you're probably going to want to use the red a lot on things like their faces because that's when their um, uh, because that's when the mesh would need the extra density to really carry animations and stuff, but we're not doing that. So we're just going to, basically, we should probably paint the whole thing blue. So we're going to go ahead and do exactly that. Blue! And then we'll paint the parts that we don't need blue white. Uh, now, colors between white and blue also work. You can use light blue and stuff like that. Um, but just for the sake of moving nice and fast, we're not going to. Things that need a little bit more density include the face and this hairline. Um, and these hands as well. And those are really the only things that need any density at all. With that in mind, we'll duplicate this, and we will go ahead and remap this using Geometry Z Remesher. You can drop the polygon count to the lowest possible level if you're trying to do something like this, which is just furniture, but you're going to want to turn on Use Poly Paint. The amount of color density you have determines how much the colors multiply the density. Should be fine at two. Let's give it a shot. Aha! So you see that we got a lot more low poly than we did before. And that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted something that was a lot more low poly. But we still have some places that aren't really suitable for what we need. Most particularly these hands. These hands are really bad. So we're going to go and switch over to the Z Remesher Guide. The Z Remesher Guide will allow you to draw on the model how the curve should go in the final version. Um, and unfortunately, it's a little bit tough to get just right. There we are. Uh, basically, I want to tell it to not not, not clip those together, uh, and we'll try it one more time now. That's better. Not a whole lot better, but you can't get much better than that, right? Um, how much that guide will get followed depends on the curve's strength, so if we really thought that that was absolutely a critical curve, we could uh, change the curve strength. You can see how we've got like a we've got like a loop now around the hands, and that should give us a little bit better quality. Um, and you can tweak this as much as you want for as much as you'd like, but to be honest, this looks okay. Uh, this hair in the back is a little bit much, so we're going to go ahead and just draw a line there as well. And that's just like, yoop. Yeah, we are much better. Yeah, perfect. Um, now we've lost some of the details on the hands because of what we're because our we changed our aim. Um, we added more polys in one place, and they came away from someplace else. You can fuss with this all you'd like, but to be honest, I think this is probably fine. Uh, the a couple of things I don't like, like this point here and stuff like that, but that should all 
come out in the wash. Notice that it added a lot of density down here in the neck. Uh, you may not like that, but I we have a hair curling down here, and I may actually add one more stroke just to try and preserve that hair. Uh, we're not really preserving the hair, are we? Uh, well, the question is whether or not this is low poly enough, uh, because what we've done is we've added a lot of density, and I think it might be worth just erasing this by holding Alt and dragging around, see? Uh, and that will take the hands away again, but the hands uh, should, should come out with a texture. They should pop with a texture, whereas the hair is fundamental. It's like a critical infrastructure part of the mesh. Uh, and if there's a big dent there, it'll look silly. Yeah, that's better. That's what we want. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and create the textures like we did before. And that means that we're going to be dividing it down to maybe six. And then we're going to want to go to the lowest subdivision level. And then we're going to go up to Z plugin, UV master unwrap, like so. And then we're going to want to project the sub tools. So turn them on and then hit project. And in this case, we don't want the poly paint data because that, that's weight paint data and it's very silly. Oh, I forgot to, sorry, I just projected our low poly mesh. Um, we're gonna wanna go up to the high subdivision level to project. Uh, so when you tell it to project and it asks you whether you want the weight paint data, you don't, not in this case, but if you'd painted like texture work, then yeah, you'd want to project that as well. There we are, perfect. So now we've got all this data. You can see that this has a lot more damage to it than it used to. Um, and that's because of the uh, difference in the way that the low poly mesh falls as compared to the high poly mesh. Uh, it might be possible to fix that or something similar. Um, to be honest, I'm okay with how this looks. Uh, the symmetry the symmetry is not great, and I'm not, not a huge fan of that. But I could, in fact, go in and change that manually. So if we go down into our subdivision levels, you can see that we are at the highest subdivision level. You can actually just go in and switch over to, say, the clay buildup brush and smooth this stuff out. It works fine, right? So you can smooth it out, you can add in clay, you can do whatever you'd like. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just quickly model in hands again. Then smooth this down. There we go, right hands, good. Uh, and we'll just fill in one of these, leave the other one because it's kind of cool. And then we'll put in more of that texture density that we, that we lost by selecting the noise brush and just noising this area up a little bit, perfect. Uh, and of course, if you don't like the fact that our nose is clay caved in like that, you can go ahead and fix that. Um, the clay buildup brush is what I use for most things. And then again, we can smooth this away. And this is why the structure was important. We really needed to have the structure of the, ma the model um, as solid, because if we didn't have the right structure, this wouldn't have helped any, because we're only changing what's going to be the texture map right now. We're not actually affecting the fundamental shape of the object. Um, and if we were to pull this object very far, we would quickly see that. Uh, it it wouldn't, wouldn't really work very well if we started to drag it a long ways. Uh, because this is the, this density here is our core density. But with this in mind, we now have a model that doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of interesting in some places, and we can fix it up to look however we want. And obviously, we just go back down to the lowest subdivision level, uh, if my mouse works. And then we go down here into um, the Z plugin UV Master. I think I already did that, but just do it again. Uh, normal map, create normal map, clone it. Flip it, export it, Polysphere 2. We're going to go ahead and save over Polysphere 1. That was my first take, uh, which I forgot to record during because I'm, I'm brilliant like that. Uh, and then we're also obviously going to want to export the mesh. Yeah, it's fine. Pop on over into Unity. 
There's our old model. Let's bring in the new model. Boom. Polysphere 1, just drop it into the scene, spin it around, and bring it on over. Hey there, sister. How are you? Feeling good? Duplicate this statue, drop it in. Now, obviously, that is the wrong normal map, but it's surprisingly close, just due to the fact that they were unwrapped by the same algorithm and they were roughly the same density. This is what our normal map really looks like, and you can see the damage is, is there, the damage that we left in. Uh, so these look pretty close to the same, aside from the, the dents in the different places. Um, you can see that our repair work lasted fine. Her hair is perfectly fine. Uh, there's no problem with her hands. All that stuff is fine. Um, this model on the left and this model on the right are basically indistinguishable in terms of quality. Um, but the question is whether or not they are indistinguishable in terms of load. So if we take a look at this, uh, I've also got a damaged one, delete that one. If we take a look inside these, this has 27, 28 tries. This is our first take with our just un, unmanaged vertex system. This is 1202 tries. So this new one on the left, which is basically identical, has less than half of the polys. Um, and it has almost the same quality. Uh, there are some places where you might choose to change the quality a little bit more. For example, uh, you might paint the face red so that you get that nose intact a little bit better and stuff like that. But I wasn't trying to create the perfect asset. I was trying to show you that you can change the density of stuff by painting and by doing Z add lines and stuff like that. Uh, so that's how you put stuff into Unity. Now, if you're creating a character, you may have to rig it. Um, I don't really know how to rig in Z brush. I don't think it's possible, um, but you can easily rig it in Blender or something because it's an OBJ file. It's nothing big. Um, just stick it into Blender uh, and rig it there or Maya or whatever else you're doing. Uh, so that is how I do this. And this is something I could not find. I eventually put it together by piecing together four or five different tutorials, some of which were from ages and ages ago. So hopefully this will help you. And if not, sorry if you have, sorry for have wasted your time. Um, and it's so cold.